Okay, this video is going to show how to make a team composite from green screen images. So we have a track team here that have been photographed for the composite. They're all standing facing the camera, hands behind their back. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do as I look over these images, I just want to review before I do anything with them to make sure that I only have one image each of these uh, subjects. So here, this girl has multiple uh, images. She has three, actually. So I'm going to delete the first two images so that we don't accidentally put her in the composite more than one time. There, there, and then the coaches file. Okay, so what I'm going to do is, first thing I need to do is to extract these green screens. So I need to get these so that there's a, uh, just a transparent background and the green screen is dropped out. To do that, I'm going to open Photoshop, pull this up, put it over here for us to look at, and I'm going to go to Filter, I'm going to go to Easy Green Screen Batch, it gives some options. For these, I just need the extraction only. Go to the source file, which is where those images are found. And I hit uh, OK. Now I'm going to just choose for this instance to save them in the same folder as the source. It'll create a new folder that's called Easy Green Screen or something like that. And then it's going to save it as a PNG file. That's the way I want this to be saved as a PNG. And I'm going to hit uh, run the batch. It will begin opening the first file, finding the green screen, and cutting that out, and saving the file, and then proceeding to the next one. So while that runs, Okay, so now my green screen extractions have completed, and they landed in this folder, and so now we see the white background just with the transparency mixed in. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open up the file that I'll be using as the background template. So in this case, I'm just going to use the last one I had saved, which was um, this tennis team. I'm going to just delete the player images out of that template, out of that file, and leave my folders. I find it's helpful to create a new um, group from the layers for front, middle, and back, and that's where I'm going to put those uh, images in this file. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab my images out of my folder. Oops, wrong one. So I'm going to take all of these that have been added and I drop them in here. And you have to hit the enter key for it to uh, open the next layer. Alright, so I've got everybody in here that I need. When I look at my number of layers here, I can come over here and count these. I have 4, 8, 12, 16, 17, 18, 19 layers. So if I divide 19 by 3, that gives me 6 with a remainder of 1. That means I'm going to have 6 on the front row, 6 on the back row, and 7 on the middle row. That'll make 19 altogether. So what I'm going to do is take these first uh, five here. Make sure I can make it easy. Yeah. So I'm going to skip the coach because he's going to go on the back layer. I'm going to put six in the front row, 
these are were photographed shortest to tallest, so I'm going to do these this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. Those I'm going to drop into the layer that I've called the front. Okay. There it is. Next, I'm going to drop the next five into the middle row. The middle. And then I'm going to drop the last six, including the coach, into that back row. One, two, three, four. Actually, there's supposed to be seven in my middle row, so I'm going to drop this into my middle. Now I should have six, two, three, I'm going to have seven. I only have six in the middle. I need one more in the middle row. Six in the back row. All right, and then these are my back row people. Right there. All right, so now I've got my three rows. <coughs> Now, likely these are going to be too large to fit six across the width of the page. So what I'm going to do is select all of those layers. Use the Move tool. Okay, so to resize these, I'm going to I select the Move tool. I have them all selected. Click on one of these boxes here, and it gives you these options on the top. What I want to do is lock the ratios, and then I'm going to reduce the size of this to about 85%. That's just going to be my rough guess at the start. If it seems to be too small after I've applied them, I'll make them a little bit bigger. If it seems to be too big, I'll make them a little bit smaller. Okay, so the next thing that I do is I'm going to turn off the middle row so I don't see those. I'm going to turn off the front row so I don't see those. Now what I want to do is make sure this right here can be selected to group. If I do that, it moves the whole group of those images, or it can be moved to layer, in which case I can move individual layers, which is what I want to do. So I'm going to pull him all the way over to the side. I'm going to pull him all the way over to the side. Leave just a little space between the edge of his arm and the side of the room. I'm going to move him just so he's a little bit behind his shoulder and move him over just a little bit behind his shoulder. If you do them in this order, then each successive um, individual will be just a little bit behind the person in front of them, and you'll have unusual overlappings of those people. All right, so I've got those kind of positioned. I'm trying to get them centered roughly in the right spots, just kind of get an eyeball uh, so that I know that these are kind of centered up. Then what I like to do is turn on the front row and do the exact same thing with the front row, but put them exactly in front of the people in the back row so that they're exact in the same spot, just lower, left to right. And that should do there. Then I'm going to turn my middle row on. We're going to move them to the windows in between the heads of these people. So there's he goes. He's going to go over here. She's going to go over, over, and then she's going to be right in the middle. Actually, these are going to have to be a little bit smaller because this is seven. I forgot this was a row of seven individuals. So this is going to all have to be down a little bit smaller. Hmm. 
Okay, so we've lost the edges over here and over here. So I'm going to make all of them a little bit smaller. All the layers are going to be reduced just a little bit. Again, select the edge, lock the aspect ratio, shrink these down. I'm going to do this is 90% of their current size. That's still a little bit too big. I'm going to do 85% of their current size, and that seems to fit them in uh, pretty well like that. And I think like that, I can move. Now, when I shrunk them down, I ran into a problem. You see the bottom of the uh, legs are cut off on that second row, so I'm going to need to adjust a couple of things. I'm going to adjust my middle row up first. Let me apply that. Transformation. I'm going to take my middle row, select it, and I'm just hitting the up arrow key until their legs are hidden behind my bar graphic back there. Then I'm going to raise the back row so that they are the right size. They've got a little bit of headroom up there. That's good. All right, the last thing I'm going to do to make this a little bit more realistic is I'm going to select all of those in one row, select all the layers in one row, go to the layer menu, align, bottom edges, and now what that does is gives them the right height with regard to one another. You don't have to do it that way, but I prefer to do it to give it a little bit more of a realistic look rather than everybody being in exactly the same level uh, when we make the, the layout. So I'm going to go to the layer again, align, bottom edges, and see how it kind of gives you a little bit different uh, heights depending on who's there. I'm going to double check when I do that to make sure I didn't get any weird uh, nubs sticking out. And there are maybe a little bit. I'm just going to raise them up to make sure they're not showing. And then I'm going to do the front row the same way. Layer, align, bottom edge. And now, see, this girl is significantly taller than the rest on that front row. I don't want that big of a disparity, so I'm just going to bring her down just a little bit. Still taller than everyone, but not like uh, she was. All right, so now everybody's in the right spot. We have everybody kind of listed in the right order here. I'm going to spread out my second row just to give them a little bit more space because they were kind of jammed in uh, the first time we did that. Let's make sure everybody's kind of evenly spaced in the head room between them. All right, so now I'm going to save that file, and that should finish this up. I'm going to rename it to track. I'm going to save the PSD file in the prints folder, and I'm going to save the JPEG file just in case there's an error. It'll be a lot easier to not have to rebuild this again. So I have all the, J, the PSD files. Now I'm going to save that same file, same file name as a JPEG with all of our other prints. And that's it. It is finished up. And when we go to our prints folder, we see all of our individual prints. And now we have also all of our team composites in there.